Hello again, I'm Wendy and this is Summer Bay Studio and today I'm going to be working again in my altered book journal which is starting to get kind of thick. What has proved very popular is painting on printed book pages. So today I'm planning to paint some poppies on printed book pages. How is that for alliteration? Lots of popping peas. And so I've I've kind of pulled out some things to go with, which you'll see uh, as we go along. But I've drawn a poppy here. I've just sketched it in pencil, which is, um, I actually used a 2B pencil, which is a little bit softer than, um, it, just so you know, if it, a pencil has Bs, it's softer, the lead is softer, and if it has Hs, it's harder. So this gives you bolder lines, the other one's harder lines. So I just did a simple sketch here which I don't know if you can even see that. I didn't want to make it too dark. And what I'm planning to do with it is I'm getting out my, my watercolors. So I'm going to be using these and I want to do kind of um kind of a salmon pink. I have salmon pink poppies in my yard, in my front flower bed, and I just went and checked to see what the leaves actually look like, and also how many buds it has. And currently it has only six. It's been kind of a strange spring because, I mean, my lilac bush had about a dozen flower bunches on it, and they're gone already, and it's been less than a week. Anyway, um, I just have to grab some paper towel and I'll be right back. Paper towel is pretty much a necessity when you're doing watercolors because you always need something to to blot your brush on. So I just keep this over between between me, the paint, the brushes and the water which is over here and that way it's very handy. Now to mix this paint I just have to get the air bubbles out of my brush and I have some paint here in my palette already and I tend to leave the paint as is because you can always use it again. All you have to do is add water as I will show you. See I add water and let me see if I can find a little scrap of watercolor paper here and I'll just show you how it turns out. So you can see there's still a lot of color in that. It's almost like this light you know so it's paint and it's light. And I want to add something like this, which makes it much more orange than I want. So I will add this color, which is Naples Yellow Red. I thought I would go with a peachy color because um, like a, I'm talking about a salmon color. So whenever you hear that sound, it's the sound of my brush against the edge of my my water jar. So as I always say in watercolor, test the color before you start painting. It's getting pretty close, but I want a bit more of that salmon, salmon color. Not quite so pink orange. And this is almost the same color as what's in my big palette. So let's see how this looks if I add this. I think that adds, makes it a little more yellow. No, I don't want that. I want it a little bit softer. That, that does make a difference. See? Between that and that, it's a noticeable difference. So what I want to do first is make it quite, quite liquid. So I'm going to try and get my paint in the picture here. That means adding some water to it. I think that'll work. No, oh, I have to move this over because I'm right-handed and I've got to find room for it, everything. And I'm painting straight on the paper here. Um, generally with with watercolors, you, what, what you often want to do is wet your paper first to get a wet in wet effect or um, completely soak it and stretch your paper and then let it dry so that it won't buckle so much. Or if you don't want buckling, you can just use 
a lot heavier paper, like if you use 300 pound paper, then you'll get a lot less buckling. Now I'm trying to put in just a bit of variation in color here. It's very, very subtle at this point. And then I want to go back in with a little bit more here so that we can get some dimension. And now this is going to take a while to dry, so I'm just going to leave it. And I'm going to do the stem and the leaves. And that one I'm using this green for, and it is called permanent yellow green. But the actual color of the poppies in my front yard, anyway, um, it's a little bit deeper. So I'm going to add a little bit of sap green. And this is, this is interesting because I have this sap green here in this palette. And then I have my large palette, which is, I'll show you this one. And this is sap green here, and it's an entirely different color green than this one because it's a different brand. So if you find that you, you buy a color and it's like, ugh, that's not what I thought be forewarned that sometimes you don't get exactly what you think you will. And also keep track of of your brands if that's important to you so that you don't end up with the shade that you don't want. So what I did was take some of the um, sap green from my my big palette because I like it better. It's, an, it's a nicer color. It's not so dull. This one is really quite dull. So I'm just making some kind of sketchy leaves here because I don't know if you're familiar with poppies, but they have kind of scraggly leaves, but they're very widely. So some of them are, are almost like ferns. I'm doing another leaf here, and I actually didn't even draw it. I'm just doing it freehand. So the, the, the poppy in, in my front flower bed is one of those that's almost like ferns. And poppies, some of them are very, like the stems are very hairy or, or almost prickly, but they look kind of fluffy, fuzzy. And others are completely um, almost blue, blue green. In fact, I think I'll add a little bit of that blue. And uh, what I'm using here is this turquoise that was already in here and you can you can get sort of a oh it's they're almost um an icy blue so i'm going to take some of this white and add it in there because i want it to look that kind of a little bit more opaque look and i'm just going to go over this so it picks up some of this blue oh look at that that's so nice look at that have a niece when she was little she used to say look it look it look it but she got all well she couldn't really say it so it was look it look it look it and my parents got such a kick out of her because they they nicknamed her look it because she said it so often there oh I, I like this I really like this blue tint. I might even put more in there as it dries. Now over here on the flower you can see because the paper has curled it's um, kind of puddling along here. So what I've done is take all the, the paint and water out of my brush and dab it so that it's, it's not dry, it's just damp, but it acts like a sponge then and it picks up this puddled water, which is great because I don't want to stand around waiting for it to dry all afternoon. Now, I'm going to be painting more on that, so stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, I'm going to do another little project, and that is for this page, I want to do a belly band and 
So I'm going to move that over because I think I can work it all in this space and move this out of the way. And I've chosen a few different materials. And I tried to kind of stay with, with this peachy color, but I've had a hard time finding any of my papers that even come close to that, except for this one. So I'm going to use this as a journal card. And the fun thing about this is that it opens up like that, and you can use it, the whole thing, inside and out. Now my, my book is needing to be measured. So I'm just going to do that so that I can cut my papers to the right right length. Um, this is about eight and a quarter. I've measured this book before, but I never seem to remember. So the pages are eight and a quarter, so that gives me lots of space. So I'm going to use this one to, just for the main part of the band, and I might as well cut off this little piece at the bottom. But wait, I think I'll just measure this first. Yeah, I'm going to measure it. Use my little bit of space here. So it's eight and a quarter. If I want it to go over, I say a quarter of an inch on each end, um, then I need to make, I think I'll make it, I want it to go over half an inch. So that means I have to make it nine and a quarter inches. So that'll be the length. That can go in my scraps. And and then the width I think I will do at let's see. Two inches. Yeah, I think I'll do two inches wide because I'm not gonna do a lot of painting. Not a lot of covering up on that page, although I might change my mind. Yeah, I think I will change my mind. Uh, I'll move this out of the way as well. And I thought what I would do is I found these pieces. Um, I think that's too pink. But I, I kind of like this because it's got a, got some other colors in it, like the green and and this brown. So um, let me see which, as you can see, it's different on each side. I think I'll go with this one because of the warmer colors. So this will go in the book on this this side. In fact, you know what? I'm going to do some more painting first, and I'm going to just put some um, just some background in here, just to kind of camouflage this and and blend it all together. The center is going to be covered with the belly band anyway. I like that this number shows. I think that's kind of fun. And also, I want to put some of this bluey green and just kind of splash it around here. So you can see how easy this is to do. Of course, now I have to wait for that to dry, which is fine because now this is dry, or at least dry enough to work in. So I'm just picking up my paint again. And of course, I have to have to mix a little bit more. So throw some of that in there. Pick up some of this other one from my other palette. That's that's nice. So I'm going to just put some some little streaks in here just to kind of show where the tops of the petals are. You know how how poppies are kind of papery? Well, that's the kind of look we're after. Um, and this one, I just want a little bit more color, a little more depth. 
So I'm going to put some orange in it as well. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Orange and pink, and that peachy pink just look kind of dazzling. So this is like the bottom of the flower. I think it kind of needs a little bit in here too. So that differentiates the bottom petal, the edge of the bottom petal. There, I like that. Okay, now we can leave this for the moment. So I'll put that out of the way again, and this will have to dry again. Oh, hold on a minute. I think I want more blue in here. So I'm just going to go over it with, with this straight turquoise blue. Just to give it a little bit bluer shade. And you'll see why in a few minutes. And oddly enough, I think I'll do a little bit of white on it too. White is an opaque, kind of an opaque color in watercolor. See the effect that has? It's very clever. And it's going wet in wet, so what's already there is still wet. But you can just move quickly and before you know it, voila! You've got a painting and watercolor, unless it's put on really thickly or really wetly, dries pretty fast. So, so let's go back to the belly band and let's do some distressing on it before I do anything else. I'm using this brown just because the background of the paper or the shade of the paper is, is already kind of antique paper because the book was published in the 1950s and it's um, the paper has yellowed, pages have yellowed over the years. I don't know if I need to do this because on the opposite page I'll probably cover it up anyway, but we'll see. Because it's going to go over the edge, although I guess it doesn't really have to. I can just glue it on, on this side of the page. Maybe I'll do that instead. That way I don't have to deal with it later on the other side. So I'll just do that. Sometimes I just think of things as I go along. I, I try to plan, but then the plans change and it's just no big deal. So since I'm going to be cutting that off anyway, I won't even bother doing the other sides, I mean the, the short ends. So I'll just Throw some of this on here and glue it down. Okay. And it's just I'm running out of room here. There we go. Okay, now I just need glue stick for this, and I think I'm going to use one of the small ones. I had another one here already open. There it is. Use this one. Just because it has a little bit more precision to it and, and because the edges don't have to be held down tight. So what kind of books are you reading now? I'm reading a couple. I'm always reading a couple. I think I want this on this side. So I just recently got the Jane Austen Society from the library and have just barely started it. I hope that's in the middle. If it's not, it's pretty close. I get the feeling with with glue sticks is that you have to you have to stick them down, stick it down the instant that you glue it. Otherwise it dries. I'm just I'm a bit puzzle by them. Okay, so this is all dry enough to work with. It's still faintly damp, but that's that's okay. And then oh, I'm, I'm going to glue it on the front here. I feel like 
kind of feel like I want to put a little bit more decoration on it. So this is going to go underneath it like that, or it can go like this. So therefore, I've got these corners to, to deal with. And well, let me see. I want something, something small. Uh, it doesn't have to make a very big statement because this is kind of making a statement. Um, I'm just going to look through here and see. I think maybe just one of these. Just to cover up the page number. Yeah, I'm not sure about the brown. I'd rather have something in the color family that we've got going here. I actually think I'm finished with my paint, so I'm going to move it so that I have more room. Um, now, where was I? Take these out and have a look at these little clock things and see if there's something that would work. Oh, I like that one. That one goes with the colors better. So I'm going to pop this one back in here and see if there's any more. Taking these out, the ones that will kind of kind of go with the, the color theme. So, and that is this pale, um, sort of an aqua color and also that peachy color. Okay, well, let's, let's just do that. So here's a few possibilities, and let me just see what we got in this postage stamp set. Seems to me I just looked through these in there. Well, this one works. It will probably be obscured anyway by whatever is over it. I hope you don't mind that I hesitate when I'm talking because sometimes you're trying to think about too many things at once and it just it's just not possible. It's like trying to multitask. There's that little telephone. Trying to multitask and they have um, pointed out quite obviously that nobody really does multitask. You just do one thing at a time quickly. Okay, there's a few possibilities, so I'm just going to get this out of my way. Okay, let's have a look at these. This is turning up nice. Um, okay, this doesn't need to be here at the moment. This is going to go here. Uh, we've got this little clock here. This little telephone. Or, is that a telephone? No, it's a little gramophone. And if I put this down here, I think that'll work. I think it'll work. Maybe put this over here. I'm going to see. If I glue this down, will it be underneath? I think so. So I'm going to cut the edges off first. Okay, this is almost dry. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna move it around a little bit so that it doesn't dry into into real watermarks on the edges. Because if it takes too long to dry in the center, it pushes the color out towards the outside. And also just carry some of it up there a little bit. Now then, this one can go down in here. And I'm going to not use the glue stick because I don't trust its ability to do the job. So this is just a tacky glue that I put into a smaller bottle so that it would have a, a smaller nozzle. Okay, now this one. 
can go right here. I'll stick this one down and then I'll put the band on. And I have one more touch to put on the painted, the poppy side, which I think you'll like, because I do. I mean, at least I think I'm going to, not having done exactly this before. We're finding out at the same time. Which is part of the, the thing about doing creative work is that you can, it's like the thrill of discovery as you work. Once it gets too routine, it's not creative anymore. It's just rote. And um, I've never been good at rote. I get bored way too easily. All right, let's find the sort of center of this. You know what? I think if I just evenly cover up a station wagon in Spain, it'll pretty much be the center. So that's handy. And glue this end down. Oh, this is going to rumple a little bit because of the dampness of the glue. Make sure I get it visually even. And press that on that side. And then find out where my middle is here. Put down a good, goodly amount of glue so that it stays well stuck. So here's the little stamp and it does tuck in under the edge. I'm okay with that. I love lots of visual activity. So sometimes it's temp tempting to just like go crazy with it, but um, I kind of have to be careful because it's so easy to overdo things. Now, what I want to do on this page is I found these stickers that are kind of in the colors that I chose. I'm going to go with this one and put it down in this bottom corner so that it obs obscures some of the print and also because it's pretty and it goes with the theme and all that. So this has, oh, this is interesting. It's a bit puffy. Yeah, it is. It's got some dimension to it. And then it has just a little, a little, little foam thing here. So the leaves, or the, leaves the petals the wings so I'm gonna just put this butterfly there and see if it sticks now I'm I might end up putting some glue under the tips of the wings we'll just wait and see the other thing I'd like to do is cover up the name Anthony so far this is the front runner but let me see what my butterfly drawer has for me Butterflies are very handy because you can pop them on ever, anywhere and they always look good. Um, you know what? I don't think this one is wide enough. Oh yeah, that'll work. That one will work. And then we have some green ones. That one won't work. It's a little bit too big. And I think it's the smallest of all my butterflies, except for some really brilliant blue ones. Okay, um, it's either the tree or the butterfly. The tree looks a little bit chunky for that spot. So because there's a butterfly here, I think a butterfly actually works. Um, I don't know what else to put on there. And I actually, to be honest, didn't think of it ahead of time. So I'm going to put this little blue butterfly on here to cover up the name Anthony. And, and this tiny orange one to cover up the page number. And that kind of pulls together this as well. And now I just have to trim this off. I've been cutting out a little ephemera pieces in the evening while I watch TV and relax. And so I've always got my scissors in the living room. It's a good thing I didn't put it over the edge because there's already something over there. See? There. All right, is everything glued down? I think so. 
wonder if we should put another butterfly down here or over by the 13. Yep, why not? There. Now this goes in here. This peeks out. So does that. So does that. And we're all finished. And there's the poppy, which as you can tell when you're watching is super easy to do. And I think it looks great. And with with the um, the colors here. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I sure have. And I hope that you will take a moment and subscribe to my channel and click the little bell so that you can get the notifications when I've got a new video. And I'll see you next time.